So you wanna know the ultimate growth strategy for your new YouTube channel. So I was on YouTube just perusing around, looking at what's up with the new content, and I've seen a lot of people do tutorials. I'm talking about like every single search result. And what I've realized is we actually do not need more information. I think people think their solution to their problem is more tips, more tricks. But what we truly need is a proactive solution that is a step-by-step -step process just for you. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to build the ultimate YouTube checklist, but I can't do it myself. Today, I have a special guest. And her name is... Peachy rhymes with Peachy. Welcome to the channel. What's I'm up? I'm honored to be on. Oh my gosh, Sarah. Because you are you're so cool and collected and knowledgeable and smart. I can say the same about you. Tell us a little about yourself. Yes. Yeah, so my channel is the intersection of tech and creativity. So I not only like to review tech, but show it in creatives' daily lives. So whether it's graphic designers, photographers, filmmakers, um, I try to have a lot of fun with different creators on my channel and just showing off new tech. And uh, I am obsessed with brand strategy and brand. So that's kind of how I land on your channel because I'm always looking at that stuff. Every every year I have a brand-a-thon where I uh, get designers, photographers to give my brand a facelift and stuff. Wow. So I'm obsessed with it. I, I wish I could be a graphic designer. Um, so it's fun to live, live through different creators um, through my YouTube channel. I love it. So I've seen Sarah become an expert herself in creating content and everyone asks like what's your creative process? Right. And it was like how do you make a video? Like how do you tell a story? So here's the thing, do you agree with me on the fact that there's just a lot of information, it's almost overwhelming? Yes. And I think the thing that makes you unique in the space now is your personality. Mm. And I think that's why I was always behind the camera initially, really? but what made me come in front of the camera was people started connecting with me and my story. Mm. And so now I like to weave in other people's stories with mine. Um, and I think that's your most unique part of you is your personality. No one else is another Jade. So knowing the importance of your personality and as you're building your personal brand, we are building the ultimate YouTube channel checklist Woo! we got some paper oh my god we got some markers does this mean I get to draw N no oh. yeah. so step one is research what do you mean by research here? so when doing tech videos the thing with that is you have to be right with everything. I'll do an iPhone video. I'll get everything right, but then I say the megapixels for the camera are 12.2 megapixels okay. instead of 12. The comment will tear you apart. What? Shocking, right? I know you've never had a hate comment in your entire no. life, but it goes a long way if you're accurate with what you're saying. If, and then you sprinkle in your personality. On the same point that Jade made in the beginning, I think it's super valuable for you to maybe be a curator of information. So maybe there are a ton of, let's say, 30 minute videos on iPhones, but no one has come in and made a snappy two minute video about the information that you really need. You really need. Mm. You could be a curator, watch all of those 30 minute videos and curate it down to that two minutes into a snackable, really fun video. Boom. That makes you unique. So my iPhone 10s, 10s Max video has 666,000 views, and then my iPhone 10R, which is this phone, has 593. So with iPhones, it's topical. People want to know about the new iPhones, right? But there's something to say about me getting early access to it. So me being at Apple events, me oh. having, me, you know, knowing the people at Apple, I will say that has helped obviously, because if I have the first video out, that's huge. So I think you have to think about that as well. You have to think about saturation. Because I, I, I want to actually draw this out because yeah. I feel like I mentioned this before to my subscribers, but now that we have Sarah here, yes. we can use an example. So here's like a quick graph of what I want to explain, which is, mm -hmm. you know, the x-axis is, t oh no, well, this is like two dropouts that I teach math. <laughs> this is time and this is viewers mm -hmm. or attention. When the iPhone drops, let's say it's right here, are you saying you have like it a little bit before, which causes you mm -hmm. to have the peak of it before everything else becomes exactly. too saturated? Yeah. So it kind of looks like this, where the popularity is the key yeah. points like right so here. So the before would be all the speculation. Mm. People are making videos before these events even happen, mm. um, which is a smart idea because if you do not have access, early access or even you can't buy it when it for, once it first comes out, you can make videos before where no one has a new iPhone and you could be addressing rumors about it. You okay. could be asking people what they want, you know? Mm. So there's many different ways you can frame your video around one piece of technology or one narrative. Sarah, Sarah, what are you doing? I'm researching. For what? What are you doing? 
Seriously, you're Comment. always on the YouTube grind and you never like, wait, what are you, what are you watching? 11 minutes later. This is quality content. All right, so yes. step number two. What is the next step of the checklist? We research, what do we do next? Okay, we have ideas of videos, but kind of being strategic of what kind of videos you make and varying that is really important. So something that I talk about a lot on my channel is tech, of course. However, no one's gonna watch an iPhone 10 video in 2020. So you have to have stuff that's called evergreen content. That means that it will be beautiful, great, people wanna watch it any time of the year in 2020 or 2030 or 2019. An example of evergreen content is I have a series on my channel called Creative Spaces TV where I go into creators studios and show how they do where they do it and um, show the process and that is something that I have used multiple times I've sent it to multiple people to prove my worth as a storyteller people's stories do not go out of style that's not tied to a trend that's not tied to a certain time period mm. so that stuff like that more documentary esque docu-series content is my evergreen content that mm. will last forever so I would say we're gonna we're just gonna go 50 50 and we're gonna say topical so you got topical content you got tech you got current events if you're a lifestyle vlogger what's happening maybe in the fashion world if you're an entrepreneur maybe updates on social media platforms exactly boom <laughs> this is good for relationship building especially yeah. when so many people like we said earlier you need to be a personality okay so youtube strategy for this week um i love this idea i gotta be topical i gotta be evergreen shoot i'm really confused I just want to be relevant god i just, just want to be relevant i just, just want to be relevant so step three, execution. Execution. We, we really don't have a good color theme going. No, but. it's not. So let's talk about execution for my videos and then we're gonna talk about through Sarah's videos. Yes. So for execution for me, it is so crucial, not necessarily to get the perfect lighting. I know this might be controversial. It's not necessarily to get the best camera, the best lighting, the best setting. When I used to do like theater and arts and musicals, you have to over enunciate yes. and really kind of think about what you're saying. My biggest tip ever is to think about, you know, have a list of points you want to make, but really enunciate on those and revolve your kind of topics around it. So it's important when people ask me, how do you have confidence? It's about having really strategic points that you're confident about mm -hmm. by, you know, saying clearly. Going back to the theater thing, because I did theater in school. <gasps> yeah. So something they always told us was you have to give 150% on that stage because that's when it'll come off as around 100% for yeah, the audience. That's what they told me too. <laughs> so it is the exact same thing we're now on camera. So this this would be the normal me. Hey Sarah. Hey Jay, how are you? I mean, we're funny, right? So we would laugh and we'd ha 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 ha. But we wouldn't be like, hey guys, welcome back to our channel. <laughs> <laughs> and this, you know, this is much more engaging, right? We're talking to you behind this this camera. We want to engage with you. We want to build community with you. And we're not performing, but you just have to keep that in the back of your mind because if you want to come off 100% to your audience, you got to put in that extra, that extra oomph. Yo, what's up? My name is Sarah Peachy. Welcome to another YouTube video. We out here in the hills. Hills. Word. <laughs> Alright guys, so we got step one. We got step two. We got step three. I don't know, Sarah. What's the next step? Four? Four? <laughs> Drop out. Hello? One, two, three. Four. 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 So step number four is super crucial. You have the piece of content. You filmed it. It's time to edit. This is my favorite one. You can take it away. I love editing you so do. much. Honestly, if I could have someone film every single video ever and just me have the time to edit. Really? That's the way it would be. What? Because I feel like editing is really where the story comes yes. into play, right? It's really where you shape your, your story. But I would say if it's not your jam like it is mine, I love editing, that's the first thing you need to delegate and get off your plate. Hmm. Because if you don't like editing, it is going to be torture for you yeah and your skills can be used in other places and, but when you're scaling that should be the first thing you get rid of interesting you're probably you were mentioning before you're trying to also delegate that out yes and it's hard it's so hard because the hardest part is because i actually like it oh, and wow. i enjoy it and i've edited almost every single video that, that's on my youtube channel right now and i'm gradually getting help with it mm. so it's very hard to to delegate when it's so like close to your heart, mm. um, but it's necessary. I would actually like have a, a vision in my head and that's where I could lay it out. And it was so hard to translate that to any other editor mm -hmm. because it's like in your head. Do you have that yeah. too? 100%. So whenever I do have editing help, I lay it all out. Like I'll send them literally three paragraphs in iMessage <laughs> of, 
<laughs> of the vision of the video. So when you know I get the edit, hopefully the only things I have to fix are technical. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I always do a lot of reading. How do you come <laughs> up with these? So, so if someone who's maybe beginning out, yeah. how do you edit good? Because anyone can rough cut. How do you tell a story through editing? Yeah. What's your tip? I think about it in a weird way. So. Here's just one strategy okay. that when I was doing a lot of events or recap videos okay. or I was doing a lot of traveling, uh, one strategy one strategy I would use um, is like sunrise to sunset. So I feel like in every video there has to be a thread throughout it. So I was editing like 10 days worth of footage together. Okay. So I would try to find one common oh. thread. So what it would be it would be time of day. So it was a four minute a uh, recap of a trip to Greece. Let's use that as an example. 10 days of footage, so much, um, but there's no common thread. So basically I, I would do everything that was similar during times of day. So it would start like waking up and then it would be oh. having fun with my friends, swimming, then it would be like eating food and then it would be watching the sunset and then it would be like partying at the club at night. And so I would incorporate um, all of those different times of day um, throughout the 10 days in that chronological timeline. So I think finding threads, if you're dealing with a lot of different footage, find certain threads, whether it's time of day, whether it's one person's interview, and you can kind of tell their story from start to finish. It really helps to have a thread for the viewer to follow. I'm so stoked to edit this collab with Sarah. I am so excited right now. Approximately 10 hours later, Ooh, number five. Number five, the publishing. Yeah, yeah you read it, you yeah, read it, you read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So my biggest tip when you're publishing is if you do your proper research, your brainstorm, you know what's topical or evergreen, when you're creating titles, SEO, description, thumbnails, it should be easy. So many people get caught up in like, what do I title my video? You should already know before mm -hmm. you make the video. If you do not know the title, it's gonna be so hard for you to craft a compelling message because you have to understand. When people are on YouTube, the first thing you do is you don't know the concept of the video. So the title, the, the thumbnail needs to, you know, really encapsulate that. Mm -hmm. So one of my biggest hacks ever, I love using tools like TubeBuddy or vidIQ. So vidIQ basically, if you're not aware, it's able for you to see what is gonna be high trending keywords or way too competitive. Mm -hmm. And if you, again, going back to our analogy, if you are in the sweet time spot, you at least will have a high competitive um, advantage mm -hmm. because by the time it's too late, vidIQ will tell you it's too late. Mm -hmm. So I like using softwares like that to really publish um, and about the thumbnail we were actually just taking a thumbnail earlier today mm -hmm. but do you have any tips for because no one really talks about it everyone talks about the video editing yeah. what do you think about the thumbnail okay it's thumbnail is so important thumbnail and title is the first thing that people see if that's not compelling all of that hard work goes away yeah with a thumbnail the simpler the better i found traditionally with me having a face in it oh, helps yeah. so look how small the thumbnails are below okay. and they're even smaller in desktop oh, so yeah. you have to understand the entire video just by glancing at a tiny thumbnail mm. then you have the timestamp in the bottom right hand corner that takes up one seventh of the yeah, entire that's image true. That's right true. so you have to start thinking about how people are viewing this on phones by the way we have a little special surprise at the end of this video. Um, you can also check out this checklist we'll have. I'll probably link it below. It's about Google Docs. I don't know. I don't think this video was trash. But no, Sarah, Sarah, no. Sarah, no. Sarah, Sarah, no. Sarah, no. If you follow the five steps, this is what it should look like. Step one is the research. So when your brain is thinking, you know, about trendy topics, it's important to understand that the consumer is already thinking about certain things. So if you provide it earlier on, it's gonna help you get that click. Mm -hmm. Now, recapping, step two. So now that you know things are trendy, you wanna balance it out and post things that are 50-50, topical and evergreen. And step three, which is filming. You wanna basically speak 150% to translate 100%. Step four, editing. And think about sunrise to sunset to keep a cohesive story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. find a thread. Find a thread that your audience can follow. So finally, when you're publishing on YouTube, understand when people have eyeballs, the first thing is the thumbnail and the title. So mm -hmm. if this is low and this is not high quality, do you understand that your conversion rate for clicks can be extremely low? If your conversion rate 
is like 2% and like a thousand people are viewing it, you need to fix this. This is the crucial thing. And if you are ever confused about your conversion rate, a simple way to find this is find out like what's your competition getting views and then find out how many views you're getting. And it's probably getting the same eyeballs if the algorithm is pushing your content. So it's really important to also understand that this number right here is crucial because this will translate into how many views you get. Boom. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Now check out Sarah's YouTube channel. Check out we your did a, We did a proper collab. Yes. I did a video with Jade where she took my Instagram, my second Instagram, and we did some content strategy around it. If you guys want to see us brainstorm, kind of even take this process in real life, check the link below. I will also link this checklist because it's the ultimate secret sauce you need. And give this video a like, subscribe, and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. Shout out, Shout out to, to the, the common, common winner. winner. Comment on this post to be a feature on the episode. So. I love you guys so much. Subscribe, <laughs> like, watch out for my evergreen content coming soon. Nice. And I'll see you guys next time. See ya.